Hey, what's up everyone? Water Coaster here, and we have a brand new breakdown for today. It's gonna to be on Miltiadis Tentaglue, the long jump gold medal champion, and we're gonna start the video right now. All right, so Miltiadis here just really came out of nowhere with this long jump. He was really struggling. He was at an 8.15 meter here on the left, and, and that was, you know, at the time, his best one. It actually got him into fourth place. He was, like, struggling between fourth and fifth place in the long jump, and then all of a sudden got an 8.41 to be able to get him into uh, first place, right? And he was actually tied first place in this jump here uh, because it was a little bit longer than... The Juan Miguel's made it so he actually ended up winning the uh, gold medal. So uh, really an, an interesting thing here. And, and what I wanted to do was be able to compare this 8.15. And, and really everything, you know, before this was, was in those low eights. I think you might have actually had one that was in like the high sevens. Uh, and then also compared to that 8.41, which is his gold meter jump. So, you know, what, what stood out to me as he's coming in and approaching is one, just the overall speed right overall like on the left he he was really trying to get a little bit more vertical it seemed like and, and wasn't really running as fast where on this one he really started to gain speed on on the right side here you know it really looked like he was going going really fast again i can't do too much uh without getting copyrighted here so we're going to keep it in, in more of a slow motion but but that was what really stood out is just how much faster he was running like here on the left uh, again you can see when he's pushing off you know, he seems to be getting a little bit more just pure vertical force where when he's on the right here, it looks like he's just getting more of like a horizontal and vertical push. It just looked like he was running faster overall, you know, getting all the way up onto his toes more effectively. It just looked like a better run. Like he'd, he'd really warmed up a good amount and was ready to, to perform at the highest level. And this was his last jump too. So he's just like, I'm gonna go balls to the wall here. And you know, it stood out to me too is, you know, you know as they're getting into the actual run you know you could see how upright he is here so where he kind of pushed off and then we're going to see the same thing here where he you know pushed off and, and you could see the positioning that he was getting into so on this on this right one you know he, he looks like he because he is building speed when he pushed off for this last one he got a little bit more vertical into the movement right so if we look to see like that knee angle and, and how he's pushing off with his foot there he just looks more vertical right you could see from this one in comparison to this one and so now you can see that when he goes into now landing and absorbing you know it, it ends up being a little bit different motion because he's getting more vertical here on on the uh, right side in comparison to the left side so this was that that last step before he loads we're going to quickly interrupt this video just to say if you like the information so far go ahead and click that thumbs up down below subscribe to the channel and we'll hop right back in the video and what stood out to me too with that with that last step before he loads is now you know because he was so vertical he almost looked like he needed to put more deceleration force on so now this is the step before and you can see a little bit more bending in that back knee in comparison to here a little bit more extension so he went from really getting a ton of extension here to not getting as much extension on this step because he really needed to decelerate in comparison to here where he had a little bit more or a little bit less speed but so that he didn't have to, to really decelerate as much as he was going into it right so then he goes and he loads right we can see the loading pattern and now you can see with hit uh, this one his loading pattern was really you know his shin angle was really bent forward here it's not as bent forward so again because he was generating all that force he's really putting a lot more into that deceleration here right so now he got a little bit more of a, of a knee bend and, and ankle bend in comparison to this one where it's not as much of an ankle bend and then he gets a nice solid reach really on both of them you know he gets a good solid reach here as he's touching though you can see that you know he's a little bit further back in the position here you know it's not much but it's a little bit further back overall uh in, in his, his loading you know positioning and you know i i do want to say you know it does look like he touches more heel first there you know from that original kind of movement pattern on really both of them and then he loads into it and accelerates off, right? Both of them, you know, he, he has really good fundamentals overall, you know, within the jump. But what ended up being the big difference, at least to me, was how he loaded into it, right? And this one, he ended up kind of falling off to the side a little bit more. This one, he kind of fell just right right straight through. But, you know, so you could see the difference in, in where he was landing. Again, there was like an 815. This one, he actually passed that mark and, and was able to get to that 841. I think they marked him right at that that 
that mark, that 841 mark. So ended up baking it. So he won the gold, you know, small differences, small, subtle differences. The approach ends up being the big thing here with the long jump, guys. You have to understand, you know, how to properly accelerate and then decelerate. And those last three steps end up being critical, right? So you can see he, you know, good size long step there, decelerate and being able to, you know, from there, shorten up that, that last step, right? So that ended up being the big thing is that as he was going, he really did a good job of shortening up that last step. Okay, on this one, you can see that comparison, right? You can see how on the left, he had a little bit more extension in comparison to the right. So when he shortened that up, that made it so then he could land with that foot a little bit more underneath him, right? And really sink into that. And on this one on the right, he really was able to get a good amount of ankle range of motion. That ended up being the big thing for him here is getting that excellent ankle range of motion, right? You can see how parallel that chin is going down to the ground. And so this is a critical position you have to be able to get it yourself into as a long jumper is having plenty of ankle range of motion to be able to get that bend. That's a ton of ankle range of motion right there to be able to then, you know, explode off. So you have to be stiff, but you also have to be able to have great control of the, the ankle and great range of motion in the ankle in order to have a lot of success as a long jumper. So uh, hopefully this ends up being beneficial for you. I thought it was super interesting to be able to watch all these top guys be able to compete. It was crazy that Cuba went from going first and second to then, you know, having Tendagluco and, and pass them both and end up winning the gold and then, you know, having, you know, Juan Miguel struggling to be able to, to compete again. I still think he probably could have, you know, gotten in first if he was able to stay healthy there at the end. But, you know, it, it is what it is, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Tendagluco showed up and, and ended up winning gold. So, Good for them and really good for, for all the, I mean, I didn't realize Cuba was so good at long jumping, right? It was, it, was a, it was a great competition to be able to watch either way. And I hope you guys were able to get a lot out of this video. If you liked it, go ahead and click that thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those down below. You can also check out down below. We do have a individual assessment if you're looking to do something like this to be able to get a better analysis of your overall long jump. We'll be able to compare it to some of the top guys and just be able to give you some exercises and some drills to do to be able to help you in improving your long jump as well. So I do do this for athletes that are looking to improve their overall performance, give them exercises, give them drills, and more importantly, give them a better understanding of the technique and what needs to improve within the technique in order to improve performance. So again, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you soon.